Good morning, my friends, and welcome to worship here with St. Paul Lutheran Church in Hamlet, North Carolina. I'm Pastor Pam Northrup, the pastor of St. Paul. Um, it is my privilege to be with you in worship today. Our worship continues with the invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. We confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. Friends, how vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my, my, by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel is from the gospel of Mark, the first chapter. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, 
Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The healing accounts of Jesus always leave me feeling unsatisfied. I'm thrilled for the people who are healed by him, but sad for those who aren't. Why doesn't Jesus heal all of them? Couldn't he just speak a word and cure every one of their illnesses, cast out their demons, restore everyone to health and to wholeness? My dad died at the age of 42 from complications after a heart attack. I was 22. I spent many years asking the question, why? Why did my dad have the heart attack? Why didn't God heal him? I sat by many bedsides, in many homes, interacted with many people who asked those same questions about their loved one. If God can bring healing for some, why isn't my loved one being healed? As I pondered that why question, why suffering exists, why some people get sick and die while others get well. I've come to understand that the healing always comes. Sometimes it's healing in this life, but sometimes our bodies are just too sick to be healed physically. And when that's the case, we give thanks for the healing that comes after death. When we go down the path of asking why, we lose sight of the big picture. You see, the miracles and healings that Jesus did were more about what they revealed about Jesus and less about the person being healed. In chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, the Gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus entered Galilee proclaiming the good news of God by announcing the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Every action that Jesus took, every word that he spoke was a sign that in the person of Jesus, the kingdom of God has come near. Every time Jesus healed someone, every time he exorcised a demon, Jesus revealed that in the kingdom of God, people are freed from all that limits them, freed from all that pushes them to the margins of society, freed from everything that keeps them from experiencing the joys of life. In healing and casting out demons, Jesus restored people to health and to wholeness. When Simon's mother-in-law was healed, when she was set free from the fever, we're told that she began to serve them. Her example is a good one. You see, while being set free is an amazing gift, we are not set free just to sit around doing nothing. Instead, we're set free for, set free for a life of service, set free to partner with Jesus in the work of reconciling and restoring everyone who has been marginalized by illness, pain, and suffering. We're set free to love who God has made us to be. We're set free to love our neighbor without exception or reservation. We're set free to proclaim the good news of God's love to all those we encounter. Now, after a day of healing the sick and casting out demons, Jesus gets up early in the morning while it is still very dark and goes to a deserted place to pray. This too is an excellent example Jesus models for us the importance of prayer, the importance of going away to a quiet place, 
to recharge your batteries, to refocus on what's important. I think that's what Jesus did. In his time of prayer, he remembered his mission, remembered what he was all about, remembered why he came to be among us. So when Simon and the other disciples found him, Jesus knew how to respond to their statement that people were searching for him. Rather than return to Galilee, where others were waiting for Jesus to heal them, Jesus declared, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. Jesus said, Let us go on. Discipleship, following Jesus, is about movement, not sitting still. It's about moving forward, not looking back. It's active, not passive. Jesus recognized that he could stay in Galilee indefinitely, that there was plenty of work to do. But that was not his mission. His mission was to announce that the the time was fulfilled, that their waiting and longing for a Messiah was over because in him, the kingdom of God has come near. His mission was not to spread the good news to only the people of Galilee. He came to announce the good news for all people. So Jesus said, let us go on. Let us go on to the neighboring towns. People need to hear the good news of God's love in every home, every neighborhood, every town and village, every city and county, all around the world. We can't just stay where we're comfortable, where we feel safe. Like Jesus, my friends, we are called to go on into every place where people are. Jesus said, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. Jesus proclaimed the message that the kingdom of God has come near. He declared that in him, God was doing a new thing. In him, the world was changing. You see, in the kingdom of God, the poor have a roof over their heads and enough to eat. The sick are made well. The outcasts are welcomed. The prisoners are set free. And because Jesus brings in the kingdom of God, people are called to repent, to stop what they're doing and return to the Lord. Now, notice that in the words of Jesus, we don't need to repent first before the kingdom of God appears. Instead, the kingdom of God comes first, ushering in a new reality and a new way of being in that reality. Therefore, We return to the Lord and trust in the good news that God already loves us, that God already restores us, already saves us, because God is for us. Now, not just for you, but for us. God's redemption and reconciliation is for all people, because in Jesus, the kingdom of God has come near. In Jesus, the kingdom of God is here now. Jesus said, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. For that is what I came out to do. Jesus was clear about his mission. And even though many people wanted him to behave differently, to take care of their needs, to meet their expectations. Jesus knew that his work was about proclaiming the message of hope and peace, reconciliation and divine love to and for all people. Jesus didn't attend the bedside of every sick person. He didn't cast out every demon and heal every disease. Sometimes he avoided the crowds and went and prayed or simply pressed on to the next town. And Jesus never explained why. 
And that tells us something about how Jesus handles our sicknesses and diseases and our prayers for healing today. Sometimes he grants miraculous, immediate, immediate healing like he did with Simon's mother-in-law. Sometimes he lets the sickness run its course and leaves us in bed. Other times he lets the disease linger for months, years, decades. Finally, finally all of us will die from one disease or another. But that's not the worst thing that can happen. In fact, it's the best thing. Why? Because Jesus died, but then he rose again and he took us with him. He not only carried our sins to the cross, he also carried our sicknesses, our frailties, our diseases. He crushed the demons that torment us. He even defeated death itself. And his victory stands. Even we, we, when we are still tormented by demons and diseases in this life, his victory stands. That's why Paul can say in Romans 8 that there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God, love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, not the devil and his demons, not a freak accident, not cancer or dementia or COVID-19. Now, chances are that sickness will strike you sooner or later. It's something that we all face. Know that Jesus will be there. You will suffer pain and loss in this life, and Jesus will still be there. He will reach down to you like he did with Simon's mother-in-law. And when the time comes, Jesus will take you by the hand and raise you up out of your grave. And that's when every one of those prayers for healing will be answered. Beloved, facing hardships, disease, pain, and suffering in this life involves dying and rising again to a new life in Christ, where we have been held from the beginning and will be for all the tomorrows to come. Jesus is on the move. He had a sense of urgency about his mission, and he didn't delay in carrying it out. He understood the message he proclaimed would restore health and wholeness to all in need of a comforting word, to all waiting to be set free, to all who longed for reconciliation. Jesus knew that his message would be transformative. Friends, we are entrusted with the message of Jesus and called to proclaim it to all those we encounter. Now I know Lutherans typically have a difficult time sharing their faith. So here are some tips. When someone asks you how you were coping through a difficult time, share how your faith strengthens you. When someone asks you how you were dealing with a, a serious diagnosis, share how your faith gives you peace. When someone asks you how you're living under stress and anxiety, Share how your faith comforts you. Proclaiming the good news of God's love, it isn't about quoting Bible verses or answering difficult theological questions. Instead, it's about speaking from your own experience about God's relationship with you and how God provides for you, comforts you, strengthens you, and enables you to push forward, to go on, in this way, my friends, we can be agents of healing and wholeness in our own way and in our own time and place. So may God give us the strength, the courage, the will to do the work that God has given us to do. Amen and amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, 
For all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, for insects in the grass, clouds on the mountaintops, for cattle and the rainwater they drink, for the humility to take our place among all creatures of the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all wearied by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by debt, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted from overwork or stress, and for all who cry out to you, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the concerns of this congregation, for those who travel, those absent from worship, those who are homebound, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, those expecting babies, those caring for loved ones, and for the people of God in this place, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For the concerns of our community, for teachers and bus drivers, administrators, and other school staff, for parents and students, for employers, business owners, and employees, for the unemployed and the underemployed, for those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who were called by name and now rest from their labors, that their lives serve as witnesses to the goodness of God, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among you, among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please join with me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A couple of announcements this morning. The Gospel of Mark Bible Study concludes this Wednesday, March the 10th at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. You can email me if you'd like the link so you can join us on Zoom. Um, all of these studies have been recorded and are available on our YouTube channel and on our website. While you, on, while you are on the YouTube channel, um, please subscribe and invite your friends and family to subscribe as well. We continue to need more subscribers as we uh, work towards hitting that 100 subscriber goal. So please do uh, continue to spread the word about our YouTube channel. The Outreach and Social Ministry Committee invites your participation in the ELCA Good Gifts fundraising campaign. It's happening now through March 15th. Your gift will support the life-saving ministries of this church, one goat, water well, or school uniform at a time. You can make your check payable to St. Paul Lutheran Church and note ELCA Good Gifts on the memo line. The season of Lent begins on February 17th with our Ash Wednesday worship service. The service will be held at 6.30 p.m. here on Facebook Live. So mark your calendar now and make plans to participate on February 17th. And now receive this blessing. God the Creator strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved fill you. And the Holy Spirit the Comforter Keep you in peace. Amen and amen. 
Thank you for worshiping this morning. Um, I continue to hold you in my prayers and hope that you'll hold us in yours. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.